And I'm um, pleased that we have uh, Verinda Mahishi here to take us through um, this exciting archive and the data within. The, uh, the floor is yours, Brenda. Okay, thank you, Linda. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Child and Family Data Archive, also known as CF Data, a place for researchers, educators, and policymakers to find and use data related to early care and education. My name is Brenda Mahishi, and I am a data project manager at CF Data. For today's webinar, I will introduce you to the CF Data team and uh, give an overview of the archive and the resources that we have to support researchers in finding and analyzing data. I will then go over in more detail how you can access the data and the different restriction levels. Um, finally, we'll close this webinar with a brief question and answer session. So launched in 2019, CF Data is the place to discover, access, and analyze data on young children, their families and communities, and the programs that serve them. CF Data is a project funded by the Office of Planning, Research, and Evaluation, um, OPRE, uh, which is within the Administration for Children and Families. CF Data is housed at the Inner University Consortium for Political and Social Research, or ICPSR, at the University of Michigan. ICPSR has 60 years of experience in providing research data. Our CF Data team consists of six members. Uh, Susan Jekulek is our director. Sandra Tang is our assistant research scientist. Kay Mars is our senior data project manager. Rachel Huang and myself are the other two data project managers and Tessa Coleman is our new data project assistant. CF Data's primary goal is to maintain and establish a secure data archive to serve as a central repository for data from previous, uh, current, and future OPRE-supported grants and contracts uh, that are relevant to the early care and education, or ECE, field. Um, to that end, we offer the data to allow for replication of the original study findings. We also want researchers and other analysts to uh, conduct additional analyses uh, to extend what can be discovered from the data beyond the findings of the original study. Uh, we promote the ability to link or harmonize across data sets to look for trends. And ultimately, um, we want the use of the data to lead to advances in knowledge of and influence decision making related to early care and education. Our intended primary audience includes researchers, policy analysts, and other stakeholders who conduct research on a wide range of issues within and across childcare, Head Start, home visiting, parenting skills, the ECE workforce, and other ECE programs, as well as those who conduct research relevant to the ECE field. Um, our data users range from novice to sophisticated. We have over 350 data sets um, archived at CF Data with accompanying documentation for secondary data analysis on important issues of policy and practice relevance. Our wide range of data includes uh, data on federal and state funded programs such as Head Start, the Child Care and Development Fund Block Grant, uh, and the Maternal, Infant, and Early Childhood Home Visiting Program. We also have administrative data, uh, community-based surveys focused on parent and child development, and observational studies in classrooms and homes. All of our data are available to researchers to analyze free of charge. 
So next, I am going to discuss some of the resources available on our website. The CF Data website is available at childandfamilydataarchive.org. Uh, through the website, researchers, policymakers, and other users can explore data, learn more about child care and early education research, and discover the training opportunities presented by CF Data. There are two ways on the main homepage to search for data. First, you can use the large search bar circled here in red and type in your search term and press enter or click on the, on the magnifying glass. Um, the second way is under the data tab. So you can then search and browse the over 350 data studies cataloged at CF Data under find data. Um, users can also browse our most recent releases there under the newly released and updated data link. Other data-related tabs include the Variables tab and the Publications tab. The Variables tab allows you to search for variables across all the studies in the archives, so that's over 600,000 variables. The Publications tab allows you to search for are over 10,000 publications and see which studies were cited um, in a particular publication and then link back to that study's data set. Here we have a screenshot of the search results page. So you enter your term or phrase of interest here and then uh, the results will show the studies, um, data-related publications, variables, and series. You can use the filters on the left panel of the search results uh, to further narrow your search. So filter by subject terms. Um, every study in our collection is tagged with multiple subject terms that capture the essence of the data set. Um, so this means you can select one or more subject terms to view all studies tagged with those terms. Data format um, lets you filter by the statistics package. Um, so that includes SAS, SPSS, data, R, and others. Data type uh, is looking at quantitative data versus qualitative. Um, time period refers to the years of data collection. The restriction type is looking at public use versus restricted use data. Author is who collected the data. Um, mode of data collection um, is how the data were collected, including through uh, interview, mail questionnaire, observation, etc. And then recent releases allows you to filter um, by the time the data were released in the last week, um, last month, or up to the last year. So once you have found a study that you are interested in learning more about, you can click on the study title and then you'll be directed to the study homepage. This is a screenshot of a study homepage. The at a glance section is where you will find important information such as a summary about the study and information on the study's methodology, sampling, weights, and more. The data and documentation tab on the study homepage allows you to download all study related documentation available for that data set. When available, the preview button will allow you to open the documentation in a modal box um, that pops out that pops up without having to download the document. Examples of informative study related documents and resources include code books, uh, user guides, and surveys and questionnaires. Using the variables search tab on the study homepage, users can search for and compare variables within the study. 
Simply enter words or phrases that relate to your measures of interest in the search box highlighted here with the, row, the, the red oval. And then the search results will return a list of variables related to your search term, including information on the variable name, uh, the label and question text, if it's available, the variable type, and the associated data set by data set number. So for example, here, the variable DLL would be found in data set DS5. When you click on a variable name, you will be directed to a page um, that shows the variable name here at the top, A3LO6, and then the question, um, which is, are children playing on sidewalk or in street? Then here you'll see all of the possible answers to that question um, with the value and then the label and uh, the unweighted frequency, both by the number and the percentage. And down here, you see the, the same values for the missing values. On that same variable search page, uh, when you scroll down, the variable frequencies are also displayed in a graph. Uh, the red bars indicate the missing values and the blue indicated the, val the valid values. The data related publications tab allows you to see a list of publications that have cited the data or cited the study of interest. Um, you can then further filter the list by clicking on the more options uh, link right here. Um, and that will take you to the main publications search page. So going back to the main CF data homepage, under the Support for Researchers tab, um, we have a collection of video resources. So here you will find uh, many videos of data release webinars and their accompanying slides, as well as data trainings offered by data producers. And up here, you can even filter the videos by a particular study or series. Under the About Us tab, uh, users can learn more about CF Data, our project team, and announcements, data releases, and upcoming trainings through the news link. CF Data also has a seasonal online newsletter uh, where we highlight new data released, recent user publications, events, and news, including on upcoming data training webinars. Um, each newsletter has a theme where we spotlight data related to that theme. Past themes have included dual language learners, teacher and center characteristics, parents' mental health, and data related to COVID-19. Our upcoming fall newsletter uh, focuses on resources to help students apply for data for their dissertation or master's thesis. Um, so we encourage everyone to sign up for our listserv on our website under the Contact Us tab, and then you will receive the newsletter in your inbox. So this was just a brief overview of CF data, but to learn more about the archive, we encourage everyone to visit us on our website and click on the About Us page. Um, and there you'll find a fun, short two minute video that introduces you to the collection and the resources that we provide for users. So now let's turn to how you can access the data. CF data hosts a range of data with varying levels of sensitive information. Uh, data with little to no risk of identifying a participant are categorized as public use data. So these data are available for download or online analysis instantly um, without an application process. Data with risk of indirect identification of a participant. So for example, um, studies with small sample size or protected or vulnerable populations or 
per requirements of the funding agency or data producer are categorized as restricted use data and require an application process to access. We restrict data to maintain confidentiality of participants while preserving the viability of the data uh, for research purposes. There are different levels of restriction. Here we have a general overview showing the data type, uh, method of access, how to access each data type, and the timeline. From the arrow on the left, you can see that the colors going from green to blue to orange um, represent increasing sensitivity of the data and therefore are more restricted. The green boxes represent accessing study documentation and searching uh, study variables. And this is a great first step when exploring the data and deciding which data set uh, you may want to use for your analysis. You would then access this information directly on the CF data website and download it instantly. The blue boxes show the public use data, which can be downloaded instantly without an applica application or it can be accessed with the online analysis feature when available. Accessing public use or restricted use data on CF data first requires users to create a free ICPSR My Data account um, and login, which is then where you will manage your applications. The orange boxes here highlight the different levels of restricted data. So we have secure download, virtual data enclave, and physical data enclave. And the steps and timeline um, for gaining access. In general, the timeline um, involves initial review by CF data staff within two to four weeks of application submission. And then once an application is approved, access is then valid for two years, as long as the application is kept in compliance. Um, and then there is an option to renew annually after that. All of the information that's provided here will also be available on our website um, to assist you in your application process. When searching for data on the website, users can filter for public use or restricted use data by using the restriction type filter here and selecting the level of restriction. So now let's first take a look at public use data and how to access it. Uh, CF data has 141 public use studies currently that can be accessed by users instantly. Um, public use data can be accessed in two ways. And the first way is through the online analysis feature. So online analysis is a unique uh, feature that's available for about 90 studies. Um, that are archived with CF data right now. Uh, users can explore and analyze data without downloading the data or even needing statistical software. This feature would be a great tool for instructors during classroom exercises or when exploring the data or um, even for students analyzing data in statistics workshops. Through online analysis, you can recode and create new variables, um, perform various types of analysis, including frequencies and cross tabs. So for example, you can review summary statistics for missing data. Um, you can create comparison, do comparisons of means and correlations, uh, correlation matrix. Um, you can even do regression analyses. Um, including multiple regression and logistical regressions, and apply analytic weights. Um, you can produce simple summary statistics for reports and then export these results for use in spreadsheets and presentations. 
And uh, you can create custom subsets of variables or cases for download into an SPSS, SAS, STATA, or a comma-separated data set from large collections, um, which will allow you to save time and sort and storage space uh, when using a personal computer. So to find studies that have the online analysis feature, use the data format filter on the search results page and select online analysis. On the study homepage, um, select the analyze online button and then a new modal box will open, um, allowing you to select from a list of available data sets to analyze within this study. The second way to access public use data is through data download. Uh, public use data sets are available in a variety of data formats, including SAS, SPSS, STATA, R, and others, um, and can be downloaded directly to the user's computer with minimal delay. Now let's take a look at the restricted use data and how to access it. CF data has almost 200 studies that are restricted use, meaning that they contain sensitive information with a potential for indirect identification of a participant. Um, restricted use data can be accessed in three ways. The first is secure download. So this is when a user selects a data security plan uh, during, during their application process and then downloads the data either to a non-networked computer, an external hard drive, or to a local virtual enclave on an isolated network, depending on the approved location specified in the plan. The majority of the restricted use studies at CF data are available via secure download. Um, the, next way, the next way is ICPSR's virtual data enclave. Um, and this refers to accessing the data through ICPSR's virtual desktop. Currently, CF data only has a few select studies that are accessed in the VDE. ICPSR's physical data enclave um, is located at our ICPSR um, office here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, the PDE is only for the most sensitive data. And currently, CF data only has video data from our mother and infant home visiting program evaluation study uh, for access in the, PD in the PDE. We encourage users who want to use restricted use data to plan ahead um, because accessing restricted use data requires some time to submit an application and receive approval. We also recommend that users spend time reviewing the code books and variables to determine whether a restricted use data set is relevant for your needs before you apply for the data. And then once you've selected a study that you'd like to access, uh, you can begin your application by clicking on the Access Restricted Data button highlighted here um, on the study homepage, and then follow the instructions and complete the sections that are shown next. This is a screenshot of the application homepage. Um, the application requires several pieces of information Access to restricted data at CF data requires the principal investigator to hold a terminal degree, such as a PhD, MD, JD, etc. Um, however, students or other researchers can still access the data by having a sponsor with a terminal degree, and then you would be listed here under research staff. Other required information includes a description of the intended research project, a data security plan, an IRB letter, and a restricted data use agreement acknowledged by the principal investigator and signed by a uh, representative from your institution. 
archive staff are available to assist you with your application and to answer any questions, um, just email us at cfdata-help at umich.edu uh, with the application request number. And now we are happy to take a few questions. So please feel free to type your question into the question box. Thank you, Brenda. While we're waiting for um, any questions that folks have been sitting on, just a reminder that uh, the recording of the session and the slides will be made available. We will post them on our um, ICPSR YouTube channel towards the end of, um, or at, after the data fair concludes. And, um, and you'll find, find those there by uh, looking for the data fair 2022 playlist. If you have questions, um, we cannot unmute you. So please um, type them into the Q&A. Looks like we've had something popped up. Um, and we have a question. Do you have any upcoming webinars that we can share? I work at a library and would like to share upcoming events on our website. Oh, great. Uh, we don't have any scheduled at the moment, but we are, we, I would encourage you to sign up for our listserv where we always, um, send out, um, send out announcements for each of our webinars. And then um, if you could share that with, with in your library, that would be, that would be great. Brenda, do you have a, um, a link to where they can sign up to that? Or um, is that something you could grab quickly or um, will that be? Uh... Um, yes, yeah, it yeah. is on our, um, our homepage, our CF data homepage under the, under the contact us um, tab. Perfect, perfect. And uh, another question, can my students use these data? They don't have a terminal degree. Um, yes, so in that situation, uh, the students would just need to have a sponsor that does have a terminal degree. So if they have maybe like a, an advisor or a professor that they're working with, um, they would they would sign the application as the principal investigator, and then the student would be listed under the research staff. And for those of you that were looking for uh, where to get that email address, um, Sandra Tang has put that in the chat in, um, in, the, um, in the webinar system, in the Zoom system. So if you click on chat on the green, um, on that green link below uh, the screen, you can find that link and just click in there and sign right up right now. Thank you. Any more questions? Oh, and it's also, I'm told that it has also been posted, the link to sign up for the email list has been posted in feed loop. So all kinds of places and that stays there. So um, it will be ever present until the end of the data fair. All right, last chance for questions. I think we are in good shape. Um, thank you so much, Brenda, and all the folks at CFDA um, at the um, Child and uh, Family Data Archive. We appreciate your time. Um, and we thank all of those who uh, attended and we look forward to watching this archive develop and share over the years. So thank you. And with that, we will end the webinar.